I get this movie comes from a different time, but if you're going to put all your credits before the film, they should probably be longer than one minute and give credit to the voice actors along with more than half the crew. Product placement for your own previous films. We wouldn't dare play it, but this cricket is singing a bunch of lies about dreams coming true if you wish upon a star, and since this came out in the 40s, I'm blaming this movie for all the grumpy boomers with failed dreams that still feel the need to share their wisdom about what's wrong with the world. Holy sudden pink umbrella, Batman! Of course, I'm just a cricket singing the way from heart to heart. Yeah, let's talk about that. Are you invited into these places that have hearts? Are you a traveling hearth-specific entertainer? Do you even entertain, or do you just tell boring stories? I'm super curious about how you make a living going from one stranger's fireplace to another when you're just a cricket. How do you not get trampled by a horse? What happens if you get to a house that doesn't even have a hearth at all? Why do you wear clothes? Sliding down the cover of the book that you were a character in. One night, a long time ago, my travels took me to a quaint little village. This cricket opening this book to tell us this story makes me believe that he wrote the thing. Also, if this story is about your travels, then why is it titled Pinocchio? And why have you published a book about your travels that's so damn big? Stars were shining like diamonds. Stars are infinitely more impressive than diamonds, so let's put a stop to making this reductive comparison and just say the stars were shining like the massive balls of energy they are. The only sign of life was a lighted window. That tree right there is alive, bro. So what do I do? I go in. Breaking and entering. Okay, maybe just trespassing. Either way, you get the point. As soon as I saw there was no one about, I made myself at home. Squatting. Shelf after shelf. This is a museum of super flammable objects. Somehow the marionette catches his eye and not the pot with a face or the wooden chair with a fist through the oddly protruding back massaging. Wait, just what the f is going on with this chair? Movie has time for this horny cricket to feel up an inanimate object. Now I have just a name for you. Pinocchio. Roll puppets. A lot of downbeats in there. That pun was the only reason for all of this clock foolery. And yes, this is a music box and not a clock, but music box foolery sounds stupid. To test out his new puppet, he makes it dance like a bear or cro magnon man, all hunched over and weird. Here, the cricket tries to blend in by appearing to be one of the animated wind-up musicians. And I just want to know exactly how big of a fucking cricket is this guy? Looks like he's as big as my old Star Wars figures in the 80s, and that's too big for crickets. At least for charming ones. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Geppetto using a marionette to abuse Figaro is only a few steps away from terrifying your cat with a cucumber. He's an alcoholic, so he can't stop drinking. Isn't it hilarious? I wonder what time it is. Every single clock in the place is going off, and this asshole has to ask this question and pull another clock out of his pocket. And yes, I refer to watches as pocket clocks. Good night, Cleo. Water, the number of casualties from all the kids that pet their fish after seeing this movie must have been horrific. Why is Jiminy's umbrella purple now when it was clearly pink earlier? This is my idea of comfort. Thinking that sleeping on an intricately carved piece of wood would be comfortable. Holy shit, smoking in bed, but also lighting your pipe with drippy ass candles. Oh, Figaro, I forgot to open the window. Making your cat get out of bed to open the window, which you are closer to and could open with much less effort. Why exactly did this guy deserve to have his wish come true? I wish that my little Pinocchio might be a real boy. Why? Kids are the worst. A very lovely thought, but not at all practical. Chimney Cricket would be excellent at cinema sins. See, the cricket is getting mad at the repetitive sounds that are keeping him awake, which is similar to how the sounds of crickets keep humans awake when they are camping or a cricket has gotten into the house. Do you get it? This umbrella handle is now a right angle, when earlier it was a hook. This umbrella has been responsible for three sins so far. Probably because they drew the first umbrella a year before they drew the next iteration of it, but still. The cricket yells quiet, and all the clocks stop ticking. And that's just not how yells or clocks work. And this is why you shouldn't leave your windows open overnight. You have given so much happiness to others. You deserve to have your wish come true. Really? What if he had wished for a violent genocide or sugar-free Fruit Loops? Also, I'm sorry, Mr. Geppetto, this is the biggest pillow we make. Why? Because tonight, Geppetto wished for a real boy. The Blue Fairy not doing a proper background check. Am I a real boy? No, Pinocchio. The Blue Fairy is terrible at granting wishes. Right and wrong? Well, how will I know? Probably no. How will I know my right from the wrong? Would you like to be Pinocchio's conscience? The Blue Fairy just gives this job to the first cricket that shows up. So the sin is again failing to do a proper background check. And now, because she is a beautiful human, this oversized cricket f***er will fall bashfully in love with her and do her bidding. Christ, this movie is horny. I dub you Pinocchio's conscience. Pinocchio needs to learn his own right from wrong, not be taught by an English-speaking oversized goddamn cricket. What does a cricket know about human interaction or emotions? Nothing! 
That's what. And always let your conscience be your guide. Meaning that large cricket I just dubbed with my star wand, even though I know nothing about him and really I'm just trying to get the hell out of here because Tinkerbell is throwing a rager tonight and I cannot be late for that shit. Last time Robin Hood took a dump in the pool. Anyway, listen to the cricket. Also, I'd like to remind you that at the very beginning of the story, Jiminy did commit a crime. And outside of that, he's mostly been trying to make sex with wooden figurines. So again, why has he been chosen for this job? Now you see, the world is full of temptation. What is this, the Bible? And anytime you need me, you know, just whistle. Where are you going to go, though? Why would you leave it all? And if you did, why would it only be so far that you could hear a whistle? This is kind of odd and f***ed up, honestly. Where did all these strings come from? Jiminy was sleeping on the neck of this thing last night, no? <laughs> Pulling a match out of your ass and or lighting a match with your ass. For a person who had this thing loaded and ready to go under his pillow, Geppetto is suddenly shaking so uncontrollably that I find it hard to believe he doesn't accidentally discharge this thing. Lost in the apparent hilarity of this cat grabs balls and makes man fire gun moment is the fact that the loud gunshot apparently turned all the clocks back on after the cricket had shouted them all to sleep. It's my wish. It's come true. No, you wish for a real boy, and this is a sentient still wood boy that is not real until he f***ing earns it or some shit. How about setting out the next one, babe, huh? Movie has time for this horny cricket to try and hook up with a toy. Let me out! Let me out! The horny cricket that tried to hook up with a toy is opposed to threesomes. And besides, tomorrow you've got to go to school. Unless some time jump just occurred, Pinocchio has only been alive for a few hours and doesn't even understand basic concepts. Yet Geppetto decides he will just send him off to school in the morning. He wanted a child so badly so that he could send him off to school? This negligence is really the whole reason all the bad things happen in the movie. So tell me again, why are we happy that Pinocchio is left in Geppetto's care at the end of this? He may not eat the apple, but giving people pocket apples that you have to dust lint off is an asshole move. Also, pulling an apple from a pocket that doesn't seem to actually exist. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here. Random book is random. Where did it come from? And does this kid even know what a book is at this point? Ah, oh, you didn't listen. Even in a movie about a wooden boy, the sudden arrival of an anthropomorphic cat and fox throws a pretty big and jarring wrench in the animal logic established earlier by Figaro and Cleo. And that donkey sh** that happens later isn't explained well enough to justify anything that's going on here. Pinocchio is almost immediately discovered by seedy folks. And why? Because he moves like a real boy, but it's made of wood. Everything about this supposed wish granting seems pretty goddamn cruel. A live puppet without strings. Sure, feels weird sending a talking cat for suspending disbelief about a wooden boy, but we've been led to believe that Pinocchio was the first instance of anything like this ever happening. And everyone in this movie, even Geppetto, goes from being shockingly surprised by his existence to knowing exactly how to exploit the situation way too quickly. Play our cards right, we'll be on easy street. Oh, my name is Honest John. I thought it was Artful Dodger. First day on the job and Jiminy is conveniently late so that Honest John can get the drop on Pinocchio. Well, hmm. fight to scholar, I see. Movie has Honest John eating an apple while holding this book upside down as if to say being illiterate makes you an asshole. I'm speaking, my boy, of the theater. Oh, the theater, the theater. What's happened to the theater? Same. Same? Makes a man take things over. Since at this point John has chosen to sing an interlude made up completely of non-words, this is as good a time as any to state that everything from this point on is the fault of Geppetto, the Blue Fairy, and Jiminy Cricket, none of whom will assume responsibility for sending a one-day-old boy out into the world with no supervision. As they keep singing and dancing, I'm growing more convinced this is just a Dickens rip-off with songs. Honestly, the Cricket is lucky as hell to just bump into Pinocchio on his way to not school. Go run and tell his father. Be snitching. The hell it would! Go tell Geppetti what's up with Pinocchio. A non-animal adult is what's needed in this situation. Attempted insecticide. P1 and only Pinocchio! Movie has given us no idea how much time has passed since Pinocchio was diverted by John the Equivocator. Stromboli has not only completed the purchase of Pinocchio, but also put together a whole song and dance performance. And since Jiminy has just shown up, we are led to believe that all this has happened on the same day. Despite having a hinged leg that should inhibit 360 degrees of motion, Pinocchio manages to swing his leg all the way the fuck around. I see Jiminy's wicket is still willing to kick it. Also, movie has time for this horny cricket to be turned on by marionettes that haven't been magically brought to life. They like him. He's a success. Gosh, maybe I was wrong. Really. You are a sorry excuse for a conscience. Well, guess he won't need me anymore. You spoke to him once to try and deter him from this path, and you hid in a flower after. You have not spoken to him since. You were giving up after the very least amount of effort you could have given. You put more effort into being horny about the lady puppets, Jim. Feeding a piece of cake to a f***ing goldfish like some kind of drunken monster. Taking a bite out of a raw onion. This will be your home. 
where I can find you always. So where do I go to the bathroom? Look, it's the convenience wagon. It belongs to Stromboli, but it's a convenience wagon to allow Jiminy back into the story just as the kid needs saving. Would like to wish him luck, though. The story jerks around our emotions momentarily so we can feel a brief moment of sadness right before introducing this very character motivation to get the story back on track. This coat and hat immediately disappear when they cut to the next shot. Jesus, Stromboli is driving this wagon train directly past every major character in the story. How the f is he making tears? He is wood. Sentient, yes, but wood. No! I mean, no. It's taken two thirds of the movie to get to the part where his nose grows when he lies, and that's almost the only thing I remembered about this movie. They chop me in the firewood! Feels like the writers want us to believe the issue here is that Pinocchio is lying, whereas the actual problem is that he's stupid. Also, I understand his nose gets longer with every lie, and I guess it makes some sense to have leaves and blossoms, maybe, because it is made out of wood after all, but this nest complete with eggs and birds makes no sense. His nose isn't growing with every lie, it's speeding up time! It's going to the future! It's like that episode of Next Generation where pockets of space were operating at different temporal frequencies and Picard's hand gets old super fast and grows cocaine fingernails. What was I talking about again? But remember, a boy who won't be good might just as well be made of wood. This only makes sense because he's made of wood. If you were to say this to me when I was a kid, I would have told you to f*** right off with that sh Scene does not contain Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Well, and who do we have to... John here singing a song about the actor's life and then immediately signing up for a job he thinks is to assassinate someone has severely shaken my trust in thespians. I'm collecting stupid little boys. Twitter. And I take them to Pleasure Island. Holy sh**, you guys. Johnny Boy is singing about the palpitating syncopation of the killer diller. That's it. I'm just giving that collection of words a sin for existing. Allergic? At the simple suggestion of being sick, Pinocchio begins to look this ill. It seems like he's been poisoned, but nothing of the sort has happened on screen, so I have no idea what's going on. I'm not sure who to blame here. Pinocchio for getting tricked twice by the same guy? Jiminy for being so concerned with winning a foot race that he disappears for the entire following scene? Or the writers for making this perfect storm of contrived character actions, without which Pinocchio would already be back in town to explain to DCF all the negligent behavior of Geppetto, a fairy, and a cricket. There sure are a lot of stupid little boys in this town. He's carrying and taking a bite out of a whole chicken! Okay, let's talk about the evil coachman's plan. He rounded up a bunch of stupid little boys with the promise of an island of fun with no cops and no parents. Then he gave them whole pies and whole chickens and encouraged them to fight each other in a tent. Now he's giving them cigars and tobacco, and after a time they all turn into donkeys. Somehow. It's a stupid plan. The Mona Lisa is here because it's famous, and someone on the production team figured the audience would probably recognize it. But is the suggestion here that this is the actual Mona Lisa or a replica? Because if they are shipping priceless works of art to this place, the whole Pleasure Island scheme gets prohibitively expensive real quick. And if they are making replicas, f why? Take a big drag, like this. Smoke shaming. Sure, Pinocchio is attempting to shoot the eight instead of the cue because he's all f***ed up and probably knows nothing about the game, but what's Lampwick's excuse for not correcting him? Ah, sh he's shooting the nine ball now. Well, these two are just playing pool incorrectly. You buttered your bread, now sleep in it. Either I don't understand the 40s or the 40s didn't understand bread. Jiminy is a wishy-washy little conscience, isn't he? Wait, what? When did this become a thing? Was it something in beer and cigars? The movie wants me to suspend disbelief that people can suddenly turn into animals, fine. But at least give me something to go on, other than acting like a jackass turns you into one. Because if that were the case, it would be a well-known fact in this universe and everyone would be walking around a little more gingerly. Now Pinocchio is changing too, but again, he's made of wood and not a real boy. So while well, I say this should make him immune to whatever is causing the transformation, if the movie is committed to this, it should at least make him a wooden donkey. Also, because of reasons, this transformation only goes halfway, and he will spend the rest of the movie as a wooden boy slash real donkey hybrid. And nobody is going to question what the f*** is going on here. Except for me, glowing blue bird with a note ex machina. Why, uh, uh, it says here he, uh, he went looking for you, and uh, uh, he was swallowed by a whale. Of course he was. Don't you realize uh, he's in a whale? You guys are putting a lot of trust in the contents of a note that a ghost bird dropped on you. He swallows whole ships alive. Ships are not alive. Look out below! The interweb believes that crickets drown a lot easier than this, and I'm compelled to go with that answer, as opposed to getting a degree in entomology. I just don't have the time. What a big plane. I wouldn't worry about it. Monstro the Whale will probably swim right past you, followed by Stromboli's wagon train. This cricket is breathing underwater, even though he pinched his nose when he jumped in. How is he floating in a bubble? He put a big rock in his pants. All the other fish swam away at the mere mention of Monstro, but these fish here are swimming right by him. They must have gills of steel. I never thought it would end this way, Figaro.
I don't know, dude. I took one look at you in the opening scene and said, yep, there's a guy destined to end up fishing off a broken shipwreck inside the belly of a whale. I mean, it was obvious. He was such a good boy. He was not. Why is Pinocchio resisting the whale? Isn't he trying to get to Geppetto? A fire! Fetch a great big fire! Lots of smoke! Pinocchio, a boy made of wood, survives this. <laughs> Whales do not roar! The sentient wooden donkey puppet child will now pull a huge ass old man out of the water by himself. Pinocchio out swimming a whale is all of the bullshit. Geppetto survives all for fuck's sake! Oh, Pinocchio! Pinocchio doesn't survive this. Like I pointed out before, he's made of wood. Should therefore be imbued with all the powers of wood. One is the ability to float, and another is not having all the squishy bits on the inside that get damaged and result in death. I mean, I could see him getting chipped or scuffed during this whole ordeal, but there's no way Cleo's bowl should have survived if Pinocchio didn't. Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish. Someday you will be a real boy. Fine, I'll give the kid brave, but truthful and unselfish are two things I have yet to see evidence of. He did learn that lying and being selfish can get you kidnapped twice, but as far as instilling these things as virtues, I fail to see when exactly that happened. You're dead, Pinocchio. No, no I'm not. Yes, yes you are. Geppetto goes from loving father to trying to pull the plug pretty quickly. This calls for a celebration! Celebrating by being a dick to your neighbors. Well, this is practically where I came in. You didn't do shit. He deserved to be a real boy. Eh, he was a little brat and then he died. This asshole gets a badge. Hey, did we ever find out how all the stupid little boys were turned into donkeys? I was hella glossed over. You fucking donkey! One night, long time. <clears throat> Don't even think. <coughs> Don't even think about trying to escape. I mean, if, if you're thinking it's a woman's bag, it's not. It's a man's bag. <coughs> October is inventory time. So right now, Statler Toyota is making the best deals of the year on all 1985 model Toyotas. You won't find a better car at a better price with better service anywhere in... The watch. That's it. We covered the data into the movement of the second hand. Oh, there you are. Well, hi, do I know you? No, yeah, but that's where you are. You're there. I didn't do it. Where is everybody? Arby's, roast beef sale. <laughs> Taste the rainbow. A whale named Monster. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's a pimp named Slickback. He ain't my father. You are not. <laughs> <laughs>